Okay, so let's see how an event works. Now, as, a, as we discussed, event is a concept of making use of one method in another method of a different class. So what I'll do is, I'll create a, a program to explain about the events concept. So events enables us to make use of the methods of one class in another class. So please remember that these events which we are talking about in the hoops concept are completely different from the events that we have it in the uh, in, uh, classical report program. So those are different and these are different. So let me create class C1 definition and class and in this we will have this public section. And in the public section, I will define something called events. E1. Events E1. Then we have, let's say we will declare methods. Okay. Events E1 and methods T1. <coughs> so we are declaring one method and one event. Then we are declaring class C1 implementation and class so in this we will go ahead with method M1 T1 T1 and method in this we will write something like Okay, so T1 and in the T1 I'll write something like write C slash five So I am um, T1 going to raise E1. Okay, so I'm just writing our simple logic here. I'm E1. I'm T1 going to raise E1. Now, after this, what I'll do is I'll write a logic here. Okay, I need to raise the event here. Raise event E1. This is the, uh, something which I am writing here. Okay. So raise event E1. Now what I will do is like, so we, we are basically the fundamental concept is one method of a class is being called from another class. That's the fundamental concept. So that's what we are trying to establish here. Now let's say class c2 definition in class in class c2 definition we go for public section and in this we'll write methods m1 for event e1 of c1 and then for event even of c1 now what are we doing here is see please remember that uh, these are this c1 and c2 are not pa parent and child class they are two independent classes and we can call it okay we can call the event the method of one class from another method this is what we can do okay so we have done this and what we'll do is we will go ahead and do the implementation for this m1 now so m1 is the method which has been linked to the event even here. 
okay so when we when we trigger this event automatically this m1 whatever is the code that gets executed let's write the implementation part of it now so we'll write class c2 implementation and class class c2 implementation and class then we have these methods Sorry, method method m1 and method. So in this code, we go to write. And event handler method. Even handler method in C2. C2 is actually the class. Okay. okay. Now this is the implementation that we have here. So we have done the definition and implementation of both the classes. The only additional thing that new thing that we have done is we have we have declared an event called event in the first class C1 and in the C2 we have declared M1 which is a which is a method that gets triggered for event E1. This is the most important thing that we have to observe. Then we are writing here in the 17th line raise event E1. So when you say raise event E1, it goes, triggers this event E1 and then it will immediately execute the method which is behind that event. And this is what will happen. Let's see that. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, start the pro program. Data obj1 type ref2 c1. Okay, I have data. No. Now here this is obj okay so here i i will write simply create object obj1 comma obj2 we can write it like this but if you're writing comma and this it's mandatory to write the colon right so we'll write the colon here and then we'll write like this create object obj1 and obj2 okay then if you have to register an event okay or if you have to register an event with reference to the method as well so what we need to do is for event whenever we write event this is mandatory for us to write set handler set handler obj1 m1 for the set handler obj2 and so j2 it's there in the second one right obj2 m1 for obj2 m1 for obj1 obj1 sir can you hear me so yes if we have c1 and c2 so we, they, they should be uh, with reference to the two classes now here we'll go ahead and uh, call method now in call method we are only going to call t1 all method obj1 t1 now this is what we have to do so now let us understand what will happen so when you when you the only execution that happens here is this 35th line obj1 t1 so when you that when you go for this t1 what what happens it first types i am t1 going to raise e1 will be printed after that it will go and raise the event e1 after raising event e1 what will happen the event e1 will immediately refer to the m1 and inside the m1 it will execute am, am event handler method in c2 
this is what will be executed so what will happen here is we will go ahead and Oh, see, uh, I have uh, I have not written the startup selection here. Startup selection is mandatory, right? The startup selection that was missing. Okay, I have added that. So I am T1 going to raise here. Event handle method is C2. These are the things that we have. Let me explain you one thing. So, here what we have to do is we have to go ahead with, um, yeah. So, what, what will happen? The T1 actually uh, gets triggered. That tree T1 method will, will, will execute the 16th line. You are all clear with that. The raise event E1 is what we have to understand. So raise event E1 will actually go and raise the event E1 and uh, then the method behind that will be triggered. Okay, for our quick understanding, what we can do is now uh, I'm setting a breakpoint. So Breakpoint actually takes us to the debugging mode and we can actually see what's happening behind the screen step by step. So what happens when you execute? Everything happens in a one go, right? So instead of that, what we can do is we, we actually can see step by step what's happening here. So if you observe here, there is um, this one. So I'll click on this button or F5 function key so that we can understand step by step what's happening. Let's see that now and uh, let's see we have executed this and it goes to immediately it goes to the 16th line because in the 16th line it will, it will uh, it, 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 this is uh, this is what is the method is so it comes in and then it raises the event even okay now from event even you observe where it is going where the system is taking us next step okay the moment even even is raised it directly takes us to the method. Why it is taking us to directly the method M1? Because in the 11th line, you can see that M1 for event E1 of C1, right? So, since we have registered the M1 as a as a handler method, it will directly take us and then it will be executed here. And then afterwards, it again comes back here to the path. Then it, it comes back to the program. So, now, yeah, this is this this what you can see on the screen is uh, is a back end uh, standard program. So I'll just skip this and click on F8. So I'm T1 going to raise even and I'm even handler in the input. Remember, whenever you are writing a program of type, um, whenever you are you know, writing a program in which we have the events, it is mandatory. No matter how many events are there, for that many events, you have to write this uh, set handler. Without this, you cannot use that event. And that event will not get triggered. So set handler obj2. Now what is obj2? The the class in which we have method. I mean like the object which is separate to the class which has m1 means the the executing method. But obj1 is the class in which we have registered the event. Okay. So first what comes method voila method one method uh, method object here and then the object in which method is created. Then for uh, for an object which, is, which has the event, this is the concept.